good friend of mine who had a heck of a time getting to the studio this morning. <laughs> so she might be a little little frenzied. So we'll uh, we'll Oh, make, we'll loosen her yeah, up. Yeah, we'll real loosen quick. her up in a curry. We've got Judith Wenzel with us. She's women realtors profit coach. How are you, Judith? I am well now that I'm finally here and <laughs> you're highway. finally here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, well, we're happy to have you sit back and relax, and I'm sure that Wayne will not pick on you too much. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, I won't at all, because she's uh, very good at what she does. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your work, women. You, you, you focus on women realtors, and a few smart men, I remember you say. <laughs> yes, a few very a few. smart men. <laughs> um, I love that tagline. I got into the real estate niche because I grew up in a household that was real estate. Hmm. But my father was a transaction chaser. So we had no home life. He (laughs) was basically working 24-7. And even when I married and had a small family and would come home to visit, my husband was active duty Navy. And when he got time, we would go back to see the grandparents every single time, be in the house about an hour, and a phone would ring. He'd have to go out. And he'd say, Princess, it's just business. (laughs) So I decided if I ever got involved in business, I was going to find another way. Well, fast forward, my husband's retired from the Navy. We've, we've moved back to South Florida to be near family. Let, let's, let's go back. That's your nickname, Princess? Well, <laughs> <laughs> and rightly so. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, just, I just want to clarify. Okay, nice. Princess. Okay. <laughs> and um, I took a job at a local Caldwell Banker firm, and it was a very large real estate firm, and mm-hmm. I managed the listings, the closings, all of the client coordinator activities for 30 agents and three brokers. And I fell in love with the profession. And I noticed a distinct difference in the individuals. Those that did well, no matter what the market was doing, had built their business on relationship. And the others that struggled, they were like my father. They were transaction chasers. Interesting. So I started studying them, the things that they did. I began reading book after book after book, and I decided to go into business for myself because working there at Caldwell Banker, even though I loved the brokers and everything I was doing, my hands were tied with what I could do Mm -hmm. as far as marketing Mm because everything was designed to bring business to the firm, not the individual realtor. Right. So Mm -hmm. I launched off on my own. Quite a few of those realtors came with me, but a surprising thing happened. Other women in services started contacting me, and a few smart men. (laughs) And so, long story short... So when you broke off, it wasn't coaching yet, right? Not yet. Okay. That was primarily marketing, clerical design, and web. Because at that point, the web was just starting to be Mm -hmm. uh, another resource for generating business. Mm -hmm. Now, did did they have a brand attached to them, or or did, did they go independent? They had their realtor uh, designation with the broker okay. logo. So they okay. had to go with that. But I encouraged them to create their own brand. Okay, okay. And an example of uh, one of my clients, uh, she was working 80 hours a week or more, had no life. Her social time existed of drinks and dinner with, col- with, friend- with colleagues or uh, clients. She didn't have time for friends or family, and she didn't have time for her hobby. So she hired me to help manage all of her listing inventory. And after working with her for a few weeks, I came into the office one day and shut the door, and I said, Ann, we need to talk. And she went, don't quit. Don't quit, please. please." (laughs) I said, I'm not going to quit, but I want you to quit. I want you to quit marketing the way you are, and I want you to try something. So she agreed to do a three-month trial of really honing down her market focus from everything and anybody Mm -hmm to specifically water ski properties. And she lived in a water ski community, and that was the one passion she had, but she didn't have time for. Mm. So she loved the idea. And at the end of the three months, she had come close to doubling her income for the year, and she was working now 60 hours a week or less. And she was listing and selling real estate on the ski lakes, either skiing herself or pulling a buyer or a seller. <laughs> That's a great story. So great story. when you get into your niche and you market yourself appropriately, she began marketing herself as the Southwest Florida water ski property specialist. And it didn't really matter what brand she had attached herself no. to. She could have gone to any real estate company. Right. That was her identification. Did it eliminate first-time home buyers or condo p- people? No. 
it actually broadened her client base, but it gave her power. She was able to cherry pick who she wanted to work with and then who she wanted to refer out to. And so to take care of the massive influx of buyers, she brought on buyer agents. You know, one of the things I've seen happen over the last 10 years or so, maybe it's longer than that, but it just seems to be the last 10 years or so, are, are these teams of, of realtors that they brand their team. Mm-hmm. And I've always wondered um, that process, where it comes from, because clearly I get it. I, and, I, and I understand it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Is that what you're talking about when you say brand yourself or a team? Uh, are there differences between those? There is a difference. The brand is what identifies you uniquely. The team is the growth of your business. Like there's a local realtor here, Team Nadine. Okay, Nadine is not her brand. I mean, that's who she is. Um, this particular client, her brand was water ski specialty. Okay. Um, I have worked with other professions that once they identify who their target market is and they really fine-tune that niche, it's very scary transformation for them. But when they specialize, they automatically appear as more knowledgeable to the public. And instead of limiting their prospects, it it throws open the doors to a much wider prospect pool. So at what point did you decide to hang up your coaching uh, sign? In other words, you were it was about doing, three you years. were doing coaching already. Oh, it, uh, it, exactly. It's a question of whether you make a business out of it or uh, or make it as part of what you do. So, what, well, how how was that decision made? It evolved through what I was actually doing with the clients because I realized the marketing materials and the image marketing that I was creating for them was just one step. I had to help them shift their mindset from the selling focus to the serving focus. And that's when coaching began to be a big part of my business. And I started kind of kicking away the clerical and cutting way back on the web design. Mm -hmm. And the coaching took off because the area that I found that I excelled in was in profit acceleration. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, I'm really working hard. I'm so busy. I said, yeah, but there's a difference between being busy, being productive, and being profitable. Mm -hmm. So I show them how to work less and market smarter. And one thing that sets me apart from any other coach in the industry is my unique and creative ways of marketing my clientele. Because we use strategies that no one else in their industry is currently using. And I'll go back to real estate for an example. I call majority of realtors cookie cutter marketers. You pick up any real estate magazine, you go page after page. Yeah. They all look the same. Well, there's whole marketing programs that they can just pick one of five, you know, uh, uh, websites or whatever, and and that's their marketing program um, that they can use right now. So you're you're absolutely correct on that. Yeah, and why would you want to? Right. You know, if if you want to stand out, uh, the marketing that I show my clients to do, they don't just stand out in a saturated market. They own that market because they skyrocket their name and their brand recognition. Um, I'll give you an example of some of the, the, the strategies that I have them do. And at mm-hmm. first they think, you know, th- I've lost a screw right. along the way. But uh, I, I say, trust me, this will actually work. Um, one is called You Take the Cake. Now, you've had a client. You've done a great bit of business with them. Everything has gone beautifully. At the end of that project, you bake a cake if you're really talented. Or you have a baker bake this for you. And on top of the cake, you put... As a client, you take the cake, and you hand deliver this to their office with some Mylar balloons. And you walk up to their desk, and you set it in front of them, and you tell them, Wayne, I just wanted to thank you once again for the honor to have been your coach. Have a great day. Now, when you leave that office, what do you think is going to (laughs) happen? Everybody's going to say, let's eat cake. And then they're going to say, who was that? Yeah. All right, so, give me another one. We just got okay. it. Give me, Here's the second one. Give me another one. Let her go, Wayne. Let her go. Go. Go to the dog park. You go to the dog park, you see lots of people out there walking their dogs. If you have a social dog, bring the dog. Great. Social dog. Yeah, well, you don't want to bring a dog that's like others. <laughs> gotcha. Not going to help you. So my introverts, I tell them, go to the park, and on the windshield of every car in the parking lot, you put a little baggie. And in the baggie, there's a couple of dog treats. There's a little trivia or fun fact about pet care, and there's your business card. And on the outside of this baggie, it's, here's a special little gift for your furry little friends, compliments of your name, your contact information. And by the way, if you or someone you know 
or ever in the need for X, Y, Z, please give me a call. The, the extroverts actually go through the park and go up to each person that's got their dog and, and hand them. them to them and say, here's something for your furry little friend. Have a great day. It's a touch and go. And I don't think, Wayne, you can tell me one person in the industry that is doing this.